All right, hello everyone. Here we're back for another golf class tutorial here. And uh, kind of another interesting little hole here as we kind of usually have to play it about two different ways. So more or less, might be actually moved up just a tiny bit more. It's actually, you know, a little bit harder to play this one because of where this divider line is. It makes, you know, for side winds, it makes, you know, you kind of have to choose because, um, you know, the rough bump is still, you know, a definitely a good way to go, but you can't always do this because you might get just enough tailwind where it makes this shot very, very challenging. And what I'll usually try to do is I'll try to kind of bump it along this right side a little bit and just get it to kind of come off this side slope. This is very, very challenging shot in this tour, though, um, in Tour 12. This is a much more challenging shot here from the third tee box. So let's kind of talk about it a little bit, but uh, I also want to go over the, uh, the fairway shot because um, it's actually a lot easier to hit this fairway shot from this extra tee box than it is from the uh, second tee. So it actually isn't too bad once you get to the wood range. Um, it's a little bit easier to play this shot. So we can talk about you know both sets here. So let's look at this rough bump first. It's gonna be primarily a headwind driver shot. And uh, you know it can definitely test your abilities a little bit because uh, there's really not a lot of gap here. You pretty much have a one out to get it up through there without actually getting it to roll up through the fringe. So most guys, you know, don't get it fully through this. If you can get that rough bump to inside three yards, uh, it usually ends up winning. Whereas in the earlier tour on from the second tee box, that sniper shot is relatively easy. Same thing doesn't apply with drivers. So, okay, so let's talk about Apocalypse real quick. You almost have four yards inside of one ring of air. So this, uh, if you look at this green here, um, there's barely four, four yards right through here. <laughs> so you pretty much only get one chance to be able to get it through. Now, if you, you could potentially luck out, you know, if you favor this right hand side and hit it perfect, you can probably get it to kind of roll in just inside the fringe here. But with a great ball to the left, you know, you'll be able to get it up here through here as well. So you can maybe get kind of two potential, but you'll never be able to get one on each side, like a great ball on each side. That, sh that attempt does not exist with this driver shot um, without being able to, to go down to a better driver, like for instance, a quarterback or a rock, because there's just too much air inside of one ring of apocalypse. It's, you know, it's, it's roughly about three and a half yards inside one of those rings. So with that being said, um, there's really no margin for error for your shot, and uh, it definitely makes it uh, a little bit more challenging to be able to uh, pull it off. So we're primarily talking about uh, headwind cases, and it really doesn't matter. You, um, you know, you'd probably prioritize based on accuracy. So, you know, I would probably kind of prioritize in this uh, you know, scale here, uh, you really, spin isn't a factor. So, you know, I would just try to start working this down in terms of, you know, accuracy as to what, what is the best priority for this hole. So here you can see, you know, these are basically all the different accuracy levels that you would have coming through here. So you would prioritize higher accuracy. So Thor 7 is going to be your best option uh, coming up through here. Um, let's, you know, I'm going to just kind of set this up here. Uh, yeah, sniper 10 here is going to be, or at least a sniper 8 for minimum. 
you'll usually be able to get that towards the top half of that. Uh, hammerhead as well, Hammerhead 6 will kind of be next. Guardian. We'll just put like a Guardian 6 or something. I would assume that you would, in Tor 12, kind of at least be there. And uh, Cat, you know, technically only needs to be unlocked. However, the higher that you get that accuracy, the better. But it's never going to pass any of those top three. So, looking at this shot here, uh, my base case for the wind, you know, we're going to be talking about these headwinds here. Side wind, you know, I might use 1.5. It's kind of a baseline backspin here. This is backspin values. So at 1.5 in these cases. And I'll start to typically, you know, start to crank this down a little bit. Maybe get towards 1. Maybe even as low as 0.5 here. Uh, it's still going to be land specific. So if you land back here versus land on the fringe edge, you know, these spins may not help. Um, the way that I try to land is maybe about a ring, uh, ring and a half from the top. So I do try to stay fairly aggressive, and that's where these kind of spins are ideal for. However, you got to keep in mind that, you know, as that wind gets stronger, you know, these might not be any good. You might need to, there, there, there could be times where you, and depending on upon where you land, you know, you might have to use no spin. So it's really just... How strong is your wind? How much of a headwind is it? Stuff like that is going to be very important. So that virtually covers that shot. Um, let's talk about this headwind case uh, and the sidewind in terms of a ring adjustment. So in the headwind case, you know, there's a chance. There's there's certain times. Uh, it, 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 it depends. It would have to be really small. But, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of mid-club or max minus 10%, it could be somewhere in that range. So um, max minus 10%, you could have it down as low as that. However, you know, there could be times where if it's a very big headwind, you might have to go as high as max plus 20. So you just kind of kind of scale it somewhere in between there. Uh, there's going to be quite a bit of range as to how much you need to go. Uh, but, you know, on average, average case, you know, max to max plus 10 is going to be kind of, you know, pretty much your usual case. So somewhere around max on average to max plus 10 <clears throat> will be kind of your average win scenario there for that shot. Um, for the side wind, I usually play it right, real close to uh, mid club, which is very close to max minus 10. So it's pretty much, you know, an equivalent statement. Doesn't matter which you use. Uh, it's, you know, very, very close ring wise. Um, and that virtually covers that shot entirely. So let's start to talk about the next shot here, which is going to be. You know, what I tried to do here is kind of land towards this right-hand side. And I'll try to get this second hop just on the front and kind of release down through towards the hole. Um, and this, you know, isn't too bad of a shot, especially considering that I usually only use it sometimes on side winds and in tailwind situations. So this is kind of a tail-specific shot, which makes this not too bad. So what I'll usually do with my backspin, maybe as much as one. Um, for the side wind, uh, I can kind of, kind of go as low as zero, and maybe you know call this around 0.5. But it's also you know again it's going to be dependent upon how strong is the wind, because if it's very strong, I'm going to always play at one. I might even play at 1.5 in this case. Um, it's just going to, you know, it's going to have some variance. Um, and same with this. You know, these could kind of be in between here. It just really depends. Do I have an 8 wind and have to play a very small case? 
or is it going to be very large? And then I'll have to increase that backspin. All these are backspin numbers as well. So you should never need topspin in any situation. And the ring adjustment is usually pretty much spot on. Max plus 20 here. Um, very few exceptions to that. I pretty much use max plus 20. It's pretty spot on here. Um, for the side wind case, it's going to also be, you know, very close to max plus 20. So, you know, you can pick and choose if it's a smaller wind. This shot is typically a little bit easier. So if it's a smaller wind, um, you can also play your opponent if you're going second, if you know you need to get through this funnel here. Um, depending on how close I need to get it will kind of dictate how the shot that I go. So, you know, for instance, if I pull off, you know, the perfect shot on this rough bump, it's going to give me a larger chance to make it. Like if I know I absolutely have to make it, um, then maybe I'll, I'll go with the rough bump because it's going to kind of raise the percentage chance that I'll be able to actually get the hole out. However, if I just need to get it close, you know, and distance control is more important, then I won't try to thread it through here with the driver. I'll try to prioritize and say, you know, the likelihood I can get it through this and thread it through is going to be with the wood. So um, good luck with this hole, guys. It should be pretty straightforward in Tour 12. Um, uh, the biggest thing is going to be wind effect because you still, in addition to these adjustments, need to play wind effect and you got to play the better wind effect than your opponent. When we're talking max ring adjustments, you know, it's usually somewhere in the neighborhood of one per four miles per hour, give or take. So if I have a side wind um, with a wood case at max club, it's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe like three green grids over. Um, what I'll usually do for this, since you can't really see green grids over, I'll use side spin instead, three side spin instead to kind of offset that wind effect in addition to the uh, ring play that I play here. So good luck with this hole and catch you guys on the next one.